Hello everyone, and welcome to Europe's biggest LEGO train event, the Bauspielbahn Treffen in Schoeditz, Germany. Organized by Elbrick, the event was attended by over 60 train builders from all over Europe and beyond. The event is open from Friday until Sunday, but the team from Elbrick has been on site since the Monday before, getting everything ready to build the giant train layout in the old tram depot in Schoeditz. All of the substructure for the layout is built by the team on-site using pallets and wood. Each participant in the group layout has sent their dimensions of their module to the organization a few months before the event, so based on those measurements a track plan has already been drawn up. This track plan is mostly followed during the construction of the layout, but as participants arrive and start setting up their modules, some small adjustments usually have to be made to make everything fit. As the final details are being placed down on the layout, the first trains are starting to appear and the railway is starting to come to life. We start this video at the central storage yard. This yard is situated at one end of the double track main line and serves as a storage yard for parking trains as well as allowing trains to turn around via the big turning loop around the yard. At the moment, a few different freight trains are using the turning loop to turn around and head back in the direction of Newfield Station. Arriving now at Newfield, you can start to get a sense of the variety of trains passing through the station. Being an international event means that there is a lot of trains from different regions and eras all sharing the track together. So meetings like these between a Hungarian steam train and a Dutch electric train set are quite common here. Leaving Newfield, we will continue our journey towards Wattenweilig Station and later on to Achivalva. Between the two stations, we first pass by the water tower and the lake.
Gibt es Gefäß für den Bedarf? Ja, schön. After Wattenweiler, trains pass through a 180 degree turn and enter a section of track protected by a realistically operating signaling system. The signals are controlled from Achivalva station and using LEGO distance sensors, trains entering the section are detected and registered automatically and the signals for that section will change accordingly. I have no idea, but uh, we will try again, just uh, Tundi will let some other trains to move first. Okay, Not I only do. are the signals automated, the switches are motorized too. Everything is controlled from the same laptop, where Donald and Tundi take turns as traffic controllers. Train drivers approaching the station will usually need to stop at the entry signals and wait for the traffic controller to set a route for them. So th this will be your route. You are standing let's in front of this sensor here, here, and here. But okay. I, I let you until the station, but you have to stop by the platform because I yes. will let in the other train. Okay, thanks. Once the traffic controller has set the route, the switches are set automatically, and the signals will change a few seconds later once all of the switches are in the correct position. The layout at BSBT uses mostly large radius curves and switches, including Achivalva Station's three main through tracks. But some of the side tracks are only accessible via standard LEGO R40 switches. This gives some drivers the opportunity to show off the slightly ridiculous flexibility of their rolling stock. Echivalva station is also where the single track branch line splits off from the double track main line. This steam locomotive here is following the junction into the branch line and towards Kich Donut station. Apart from a few stations, the whole branch line is a single track route. This means that trains will sometimes need to wait at the station to let oncoming traffic pass. Trains can only proceed if there is a clear route until the next station or passing point. In this case, two steam trains are approaching Kich Donut station from the bridge, so any traffic coming from the direction of the main line will need to wait at the station until the track is clear. Once the two steam trains have passed, the train coming from the main line is free to proceed through the forest towards the next station on the route, Pelleberg.
At the end of the branch line is a big yard, where trains are shunted and engines can run around and take their trains back in the other direction. There is even a sliding turntable and engine shed for turning around and storing steam engines. While this is the end of the branch line, it's not the end of the tracks altogether. For that we need to continue a bit further onto a section of narrow gauge. We follow a narrow gauge engine pulling three loaded freight wagons from the very end of the layout back to the standard gauge transfer station. Once the train reaches the transfer station, the loco runs around and pushes the wagons onto the transfer ramps, where the standard gauge wagons are picked up from their narrow gauge buggies and rolled back onto their own wheels. After the wagons have been transferred to the standard gauge tracks, the narrow gauge engine is connected using a rope to shunt the wagons into position from a parallel track. <laughs> Meanwhile, regular shunting continues and the freight train is about to leave the yard and head back down the branch line towards Echifava station and the main line. Now we travel back to the central yard where we started this video to have a quick look at the Ringelheim Bahnbetriebswerk and the nearby automated unloading dock. At Ringelheim a loco is being turned on the large turntable, while a freight train full of kidney beans is just getting unloaded into a ship. The freight wagons are uncoupled one by one and rolled onto the unloading structure. With a few button presses, the wagons are tilted up and moved closer to the barge below.
The doors on the wagon are opened and the contents is unloaded into the ship. Once emptied, the car is tilted back and the structure rotates, allowing the car to roll into a side track with the rest of the empty cars. From there, a shunting locomotive couples up to the cars, ready to collect a new load of cargo. We return briefly to Echivalva, this time following the main line through the station and continuing towards a section of elevated railway. <laughs> As indicated by the minifigure waving the yellow flag, the signals are currently not operating. Presumably, Donut had gotten tired of resetting the system for the hundredth time after another driver ignored the red light, or was just out running some trains of his own. From the elevated railway, we arrive at the banana yard. The banana yard and a section of Heveland just beyond were a popular photo stop, giving you some nice opportunities to capture trains as they snake their way through the curved tracks. As usual, the banana yard was home to a lot of different trains throughout the weekend, with a wide variety of models making use of the free available parking tracks. Another popular photo stop was this railway bridge. A lot of people would stop here to take pictures of the trains as they passed over the shallow river below. After the red bridge, trains go through a 180 degree turn and then cross another bridge. This stone bridge is a lot narrower, meaning the double tracks have to intersect with one another. So while there are no switches involved, trains can only cross the bridge in one direction at a time. After the bridge is a large helix to help trains get up and down from the upper level of the layout.
this was probably my favorite part of the layout and I spent quite a while on Sunday just sitting on the sofa in the middle of the helix watching the trains go by. At the top of the helix is Rangierbahnhof Zwickau Bakken. This rather large freight yard is built on a slight slope and can be used as a fully functional hump yard. The locomotive pushes the freight cars over the hump at the top and by setting the switches the wagons can be sorted onto their designated tracks as they slowly roll down the hill. Sadly I didn't get around to filming the hump yard in action but there are some videos of it on Thomas's YouTube channel who built the yard. After the yard, the temperature drops suddenly and we find ourselves in a winter landscape. A big contrast to the August sun beating down on us through the big glass skylights in the tram depot. I think all of us were wishing we could cool off in the snow for a while. On Sunday the event closes at 4 o'clock to give everyone time to pack up and disassemble everything. But on Saturday the hall stays open until 10, well past sunset. This means there's a lot of opportunity for nighttime running. All the main lights in the hall are turned off, only some blue lights on the walls remain and of course all the tiny lights built into the trains and the structures on the layout.
megint bejöttek, mert visszatoltak a vártóról. Köszönöm. És hogy beenged, ha mondom. Jó. Where do you want to go, Erin? Yeah, I think straight through is the best for now. Okay. I want to thank everyone that attended the event for a great weekend. And I especially want to thank the team from Elbrick who did a great job organizing everything. I've tried to compile a list of everyone who participated in the event in the video description, so please go check out everyone's stuff if you want to see more. Thanks for watching and please consider subscribing if you want to see more videos like this in the future.